Hi, everybody. This is Virginia Miller coming to you for the DeKalb County Library System. And we're going to make a very, very simple, easy piece. And please, before those of you who chastise me for using those words and then doing something that you don't feel as easy or simple at all, I promise you, I'm letting the beads do the talking for this one. We're going to be celebrating today. We're going to spotlight um, Ecuador Independence Day. Oh, I swallowed wrong. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So what I'm going to be using are some, um, some tagua, tagua nut beads and uh, their little rondelles like this. You'd be able to see better at the other camera. So there are these little rondelles and some um, acai nuts that have also been drilled. Um, so we're going to be using those today and I'm gonna uh, show you how to assemble a very easy piece that you, that you can do um, within minutes, in minutes. So it's going, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's a very colorful, I love getting these Beads come from the rainforests of South America, and I just love them. They're so beautiful and vibrant in color. So, and natural, I love natural things. So we're going to make a nice bracelet um, with suede cord and these beads. Let the beads speak for themselves. We're gonna make a little statement bracelet, bracelet out of these beads, and we're going to use some end, um, clamps and uh, some things that we don't usually get a chance to use. We're going to be doing a little bit of wire wrapping, but not an overwhelming amount. We will be making our own clasps and our own loops, so we will be doing some wire wrapping here. Um, but it, I promise you it's going to be a very simple design. You do not have to use the type of beads that I'm using. This design is so versatile and uh, that you can do any beads with this that are a reasonable size and make this a beautiful bracelet and do multiples of them and they will never look the same. So all you need are the regular tools and I have not taken them off my board here. You need your round nose pliers and if, if there's any question about that, they're just round all the way around the barrel. The barrel is completely round. It tapers smaller from the hilt is a little is bigger and it tapers smaller towards the tip. Then we have our square pliers um, that are also tapered. They're slightly round on the outside and they're completely flat on the inside. And finally we have our cutters that do just that. They cut wire, they cut chain, and today they're going to also cut some cord, some suede cord that we're gonna be using. And of course, you should have a ruler to measure everything out. So let's go ahead and get cracking on this because I want to prove to you how simple it is going to be for you to make. I'm putting everything in place here. Okay, so let's get down here. Okay, here are the beads that we're going to be using today. These are my um, little acai nuts, and these are my aqua, I mean aqua, my um, tagua beads, and um, some little chips put together a very colorful but, but simple bracelet. We're going to be using suede cord um, uh, to finish it off and some wire and a few little embellishments. I'm going to be using these little silver daisies and some little silver beads, four millimeter. So we've got um, four millimeter, or at least four or six, four millimeter, yeah. Four millimeter daisies or little flower spacers is, is what these are. Some little four millimeter silver rounds. You can use three, you can use four, depending on how much silver you want to show. But I just wanted to get a, give it a little pop of, of metal along with it, since we're also going to be using these um, uh, uh, 
these these um, silver clamps. They're not clamps. They're like um, yeah, they're like clamps, and they just hold your cord together. They just control your cord and keep it in place. And they were also going to have some clamps on the end. And these are end clamps. Yeah. So between those things, those things are going to make up our bracelet. And we just need a little bit of wire. Now, the way to determine how much wire you need, because like I said, we're going to be doing a little wire wrapping. So we're going to need some um, a little extra wire because I'm going to do one of my one of my all time favorite funnel wraps. So what you're going to need to do is decide how many beads you want on your on the main focal point of your bracelet and, and how much space they take up. Like, for instance, this one, we did this bar bracelet. And you just need to measure how, mu how many beads you're going to put on, how much space they take up on the wire. And then for the funnel wrap, you'll need four inches on each side of your beads in order to wrap this accordingly. And I just dropped the ruler. There you go. Come back. OK, so I'm going to put my beads on just to see how much wire I need. I have an idea of what it is, but I just want to see. Oh, let me put these on. This is the way I'm doing it. I'm putting on a silver bead. And then one of my tag was, and a couple of these little daisies, just giving it some contrast. This on there. And then another epitone, yes. Then uh, one of my tag was pretty. And we went green, yellow next. I'll put the red one on. Got the green and the red and the yellow. And then two more of my little daisy spacers. And you don't have to use these. You can you can use these little silver, these little silver rounds all the way through if you want to. I just wanted to give it a little um, pop of some metal, some silver. You can use gold, copper, whatever color you like. I'm going with the silver. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, that's going to be my focal point. These beads are going on later. So this is what I'm going to use as my focal. Um, it measures about a little over an inch and a half, just under an inch and a quarter. So an, about an inch and five eighths. I'm just going to say an inch and three quarters. I need four inches on each side in addition to that. So that's eight, nine, and three quarters. I'm just going to say 10 inches. So I'm going to give myself 10 inches of wire. Just as long as you have that four inches on each side, you're good to go. So 10 inches of wire. There we go. Cut that off. I don't need to leave that on there, but. Because I designed it. I don't want to mess it up, but if I take it off, up, it's all going to fall apart. Eh, too bad. Easy enough to put back together. So the first thing that I'm going to do is measure from the end. I'm going to measure four inches from the end. Wait, I don't have 10 inches here. I only have eight. What happened? Oh, okay. I can use that later. 10 inches, 10, 10, 10. Boy, am I glad I caught that before I got to work. Inches. Measure again just to make sure. Yes. Good. So I'm going to measure four inches from the end for my first loop. I'm going to bend 
my wire back. And I'm going to grab my round pliers. And I'm going to slide them under or, or slide the uh, short wire in between the two barrels. So one barrel is on top of the short wire. The other barrel is underneath the short wire. I'm going to slide back here as close to the back as I can get without running into this square portion back here. Then I'm going to take my short wire, see if I can back, get a little, keep it close but not lose part of what I'm doing here. So here's my short wire. It's right there in between the two barrels. My um, one barrel is on top of the short wire. The other one is underneath the short wire and my longer piece wire is hanging down the side. I don't stretch, straighten it out because I'm about to curl it up anyway. So what's the point? It, that doesn't have to be. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this short tail of wire over the top barrel of my pliers and down the side. I'm just gonna let it rest on the two barrels, just right down here on the side. Just like that. And then I'm gonna hold on to the wire so that it doesn't shift too much. And I'm gonna turn my pliers so that I can bring this short wire under again and rest against those two barrels. So now I have a loop. There's my little loop. So then I can take the wire out, take a look at my loop, looks pretty good, except I want this long wire to be running straight up the center of my loop. And if you look closely, you can see that it's not, it's a little off to the side. So I'm gonna go back in with my pliers and roll that down until it's perfectly centered. So now it's in the center. Then I'm going to grab my, oops, not my cutters, my goodness. Grab my pliers, my square pliers. And I'm gonna take the short tail of wire and I'm gonna wrap it right under my loop around the long tail of wire. Very, very close to my pliers as close as I can get, just one wrap around there. And then I wanna keep wrapping because I'm going to create a funnel. So now I need to bring my wire over that wrap that I just made and wrap it around the loop, the bottom of the loop, just like that. So there's my first wrap. Then I'm gonna bring and wrap it around again, and I'm wrapping up towards the top of my loop. And I'm folding it over. I don't want you to pull the wire because if you do, you'll collapse your loop. And we wanna keep that intact. Okay, so I'm just gonna wrap that over my loop. And then I like to turn it around so I can see where my wire is going. Turn it around and wrap it over the other side of my loop. And then turn it again. Wrap it above that last wrap. Turn it again. Fold that over on top or above the other wrap. And then turn it again. And you can see that little funnel starting, starting to form. Isn't that neat? I love it. Okay, I think I can get one more wrap around there. Bring that across. There we go. Make sure my wires are nice and close together. And I think that's gonna be my last wrap. And there's my little funnel. Isn't that neat? So now I wanna cut off the tail, this little end of wire, 
right here in the middle of my funnel, right in the middle of the loop. So I'm gonna cut that off. And it's too short for me to hold, so I'm gonna cut it down into my little spool so I don't have to chase it around my carpet. Okay, and now make any corrections that you need to. If your wires are spreading apart a little bit, just push them together. Okay, and then I'm going to take my pliers and push this little tip inside the loop. So I'm gonna push it back and then down inside the funnel, just that. So now it's on the inside and it won't catch on anything. So there's my little funnel. Neat, huh? Okay, so now I get to put my beads on. So how did I have that? And start with a silver and add one of my tag was. No, that's not a tag one. This is an acai bead. These are those things that people put in juice and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know what they're supposed to do, but they're supposed to be good for energy. I don't know what they're for. They're supposed to have some really good um, health properties. Okay, and I'm going to put two of my little daisies on. You can put as many of these daisies on as you want, or you can substitute these little round um, silver beads if you'd rather do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my little green one on and my red one and then my yellow one. My little tag was, aren't they cute? And oh, you know what? I should have checked the flag colors and used those colors, but I don't know if I have those. Oh my gosh, there's an emergency squad making a lot of noise out there. Two daisies on and another acai and Lastly, a silver. Okay, there we go. And now I need to make a funnel wrap on the other side. So I'm going to, be, let's see how much wire I have left. Let's see how good my little calculations were. So I have, yep, good. Four and a quarter inches for the other side. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna make my funnel for the other side. I want that loop to go the same direction as this one. This one is right now, I've got it laying flat, right to left. So I'm gonna bend my wire the same direction. There we go. And I want it right on top of the bead. I don't want a space in between there. It's right on top of there. Okay, grab my round nose pliers and slide my wire in between the two barrels to the back as close as I can get to the hilt without hitting the hilt. And I'm gonna bring that wire over the top of my pliers and down the side of the beads. Then I'm gonna hold on to everything open up my pliers, reposition them, and bring that wire underneath. There we go. And then I'm gonna roll my loop until it's resting right on top of my beads. Check it out, make sure it's where I want it. Yes, that's very good. Grab my square pliers. There we go. And let's start my little wrap. Let's check this, make sure it's nicely placed. That looks good. Yeah, that looks like it's centered nicely. Let's do my first wrap right under the bottom of my lip. There we go. Yes. Turn it around and bring it the rest of the way around. 
make the next wrap just over the top. Or not, oh, you don't want it on top of the wire. You just want it over or above, I guess I should say, the other wrap. And I'm moving up the face of my loop, up towards the top. Turn and wrap. Turn and wrap. and wraps. And keep going until I have a similar funnel to the other side. And you can count your wraps so that they're the same, or you can just keep going if you wanted to want to make it really organic, Do as many wraps as you want. I'm gonna keep mine similar. There we go. I think that's as far as I can go. How many wraps do I have here? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, okay, so. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, that's very good. All right, so now I'm going to bring it around one last half time and cut it off. I'm going to grab my clippers, my cutters, cut that right in the middle of my loop, just right there in the center. Okay, it's long enough to hold on to. Clip. And... Take my square pliers, push that towards the back and down inside my funnel. Very nice. And there's my little buckle piece. Yay. Now this is gonna go on my wrist. I don't want it just to stick out like that. I want it to curve so that it rests very easily on my wrist. I want it to curve around a little bit. Nice little graceful curve. You don't want to make, make big bends or anything, but I do want it to rest here. Yes, I like it. Now I just need to add my cord. So measure your piece. See how big it is with the little curve in it. Mine's just a little over two inches, about two and an eighth. Then you need to measure your wrist to determine how much cord you need. So I need about seven and a half inches complete, including my clasp and my loops. So you need to take that into consideration too. That's going to add another good inch on. So I'm going to give myself, let's see, seven and a half. I'm going to knock, knock off some of that. I'm going to take it down to seven and then I can measure again. So seven inches, and we're doubling this, so I need five inches for each side because it's gonna be doubled like that. So I need five inches. I can cut off some of it if I need to. See, so use my cutters for everything. I can cut this, I can cut wire, I can cut chain. They are very, very, very useful. Soon. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to thread my cord through. Now, just a word of caution. When you're making your little loops, you might, you don't want to go so far up that you can't get your cord through. Mine's just making it. 
So you want to take that into consideration. Okay, I want these to be even. A little bit more on this side. There we go. Yes. And now I'm going to use my little crimp, this little silver crimp. And this is, I think it's 11 inches long. No, it's eight inches, eight inches long. So I'm gonna slide that on. And this is the top of my bracelet. So I want the little seam to go underneath. So I can just put this on like this, or I can slide it in from the end, whatever works better for you. And if you need to, open it up some. I usually just slide one of them in and then push the other one in with it. So I don't have to manipulate the um, crimp too much. I don't like to open and close it too much because I wanted to make, I want to make sure it keeps its form. Okay, so push that inside. Slide that down until I just have a small loop in my cord right here. Okay, and there's the bottom. I want the seam on the bottom. Flip that around a little bit and make sure that my cord is firmly ensconced in there and then squeeze it close. You can squeeze it with your fingers if you're strong enough to do that, or you can squeeze it with your pliers. Just make sure that cord is in there. Squeeze that together. And I just do it a little bit at a time so I can make sure that my cord is in there all the way. So I'll squeeze the ends together like that. And then I squeeze the back of it down. I don't want to flatten it. I just want it nice and secure. And it can be overlapping a little bit. But it's even better if the ends just meet. And just work with it until you get it the way you want. There we go. There's one. And let's go to the other side. Okay. Slide that in. It's tight. Get in there. There we go. Double that over until the ends are the same. Oops, oops. There we go. There we go. A little longer on that side, pull that. There we go, and let's grab my little crimp. Just a little more. Okay, grab my little crimp and I'm gonna feed one on and then put the other one inside beside it. Here we go. There we go, there we go. And I want that little seam to be on the bottom. There's my bottom. Make sure I have a little loop up here.
and squeeze. Oops, looks better with the square pliers. Squeeze it together. There we go. And then squeeze this down a little bit. And do not try to rush this. Take your time. You don't want to ruin your crimp. Your crimp tube here. It's nice and secure. Here we go. Okay, so we're almost there. Yay. So now all I need to do, well, not all, we're almost there. I need to add my little grips on the back here. I want to check and make sure my little ends are even. This one's a fraction of an inch, maybe a sixteenth of an inch longer than the other side. Let me double check. Okay. Yeah, just a, no, not enough, not enough to cut. Yeah, that's fine. That is just fine. So I'm gonna take my little clamps. I'm gonna spread this open a little bit. And slide one of my end clamps. They have these little teeth on them so that they'll grip my cord. Slide those in, make sure they're resting in the, in the inside my little clamp and squeeze with my fingers just to get them in place. And then I'm gonna take another look, make sure that they're nicely enclosed. And then I'm gonna take my pliers and give it a little squeeze, check again, make sure everything's fine. Squeeze it on the other side, check again, it looks good. And give it another couple of big squeezes just to finish it off. There we go. Nice. Same thing on the other side. Looks like I could cut a little tiny bit of this off of this end. Just a teeny bit. Snip that just to make it even. Okay. Okay, and again, I like to spread it just a little bit apart at the tip here. Grab my little end clamp, slide it on, make sure that both ends are in there. Give it a little squeeze with my fingers. Check, make sure they're both inside. They are. Squeeze a little bit with my pliers on each side. Double check before I give it the final squeezes. And then let's finish it off. Nice and tight. Very good. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Let's turn my little wasabi. A little marking. I like to have the marking showing. Ah, oh, isn't it pretty? Yes, it is. Okay. Look at that. I crossed that over. This should have been, would have been better over on this side. So I'm going to open this up. I just love it when I make a boo-boo so I can show you how to fix it. I really don't love it, but I think it helps. I'm just going to open this up a little bit. 
you don't want to force it too much because you don't want to break your little print. But just open that up a little bit. Take that out. Cross it over the other way. Yeah, I think that's more natural for this top one to be over on this side and the bottom one to be over on that side. Okay, and put those back in there. Double check, does that look right? Yeah, it looks right to me. And squeeze my little clamp down around around my cord and then squeeze it closed. Boom and boom. There we go. Much better. It lays better. Yay. Okay, so now all we need to do is make the hook and the clasp. The hook and the eye, I guess I should say, because there's my bracelet. Oops. Curve it around a little bit more so that it fits the curvature of my wrist. Here we go. Yes. And now the size of your hook and your loop is going to depend on how much space you have back here. So you can make it as big or as small as you want, but my little curvature is taking up some of the space. I only have six and a half inches here. I need seven and a half in order for me to be able to fasten my bracelet. I'm gonna need a good inch, like I think I mentioned before, between my hook and my, my, my um, hook and eye, in order to make my bracelet fit. So let's get to work on that. I love to make a beaded, um, a beaded hook and eye. I just like everything to match. That's just me. So what I'm gonna do, some of this out of the way, these are cord pieces. I'm going to give myself four inches of wire for my hook, and three inches for my loop. Okay. There we go. So, first thing I'm going to do is make a wrap loop. That will incorporate that will that my hook will go into. So I'm going to go about an inch from the tip here and make a fairly large loop. So I'm going to bend my wire back right at that inch mark. Grab my round nose pliers, slide all the way to back here, just like I did with this loop here. Slide my wire in between the uh, barrels of my pliers. Um, one, one barrel is under the short, the short tail. The other is on top of the short tail. The long tail is hanging down the side. Bring that wire over the top of my pliers and down the side. Meet that, lar that long loop. Hold on to my wire. Open my pliers. Reposition them until they're kind of on top and the wire's are both hanging down underneath. Bring that short tail of wire over until I have a loop. Now again, my little stem here is not in the center. So I wanna roll that over until it's right in the center. So if I were to take a piece of wire and run it all the way up to the top. This piece of wire, run it all the way up to the top. It would run right through the center of my loop. I'm gonna take my round, my square pliers and I'm going to wrap my loop. I'm only gonna give it one wrap. I just wanna secure my loop. 
I'm going to bring that around one time and cut off that end. Go get rid of that guy and push down that little tip. As a matter of fact, I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter. I want it really short here. Because I like the little tip here. I like that to rest in the center of my loop. I just find that if it's if it's on the side, it tends to get caught on things, no matter how conscientious you are about pushing that down. It's still, if it's over here, sometimes it gets caught on things. So I like to push it down right in, in the center here. Okay. Now I'm going to put my little bead chip on. There we go. Isn't that cute? And then I'm going to make another loop that's going to go inside. Inside my, my clamp to put a, to uh, attach it to the bracelet. So now this loop needs to go side to side because my hook is going to go into it. So this loop needs to be attached to my clamp. So I need to get that to go front to back. So this side to side, this hook front to back or up and down, just whatever the opposite of this loop is. So I'm going to bend right there on top of my B. Yeah, I don't want any spaces in between there. Then I'm going to grab my round nose pliers. I'm going to slide it down about halfway. It does. This does not have to be a huge loop. I'm going to go halfway down, wrap my wire around the pliers, just like that. Open my pliers, reposition them, and bring the wire under my pliers, right between the pliers and the bead. Then I'm going to stop because I need to attach this to my bracelet. So see this, this wire is going up and down. This one's going side to side. If I turn this one, I see that one. If I turn it this way, I see this one, but I don't see the flat part of this one. Just so they're opposite. And I'm gonna slide this on. Slide my little clasp on there, my little clamp down into my loop. And we're going to wrap it. Now, this loop is small. If you feel, feel more comfortable using your round pliers, do so. But go back as far as you can go. Because if you do it from the tip, it's going to keep wiggling. And you're going to end up putting little bends and um, dip, dips in, in your wire. So if you want to use your round pliers, that's fine. Just go as far back as you can get and still secure your wire. I only need one wrap around there, one full wrap. Tip off that tail, right in the center of my loop, boom. And push that end down. So there is my little loop part. Let's see how big it is. Yep. A little over half an inch. Very good. Now I'm going to do my hook. Four inches of wire. I'm going to give myself an inch and a quarter from the tip. There we go. I'm going to bend my wire short on one side, long on the other side, and I just want them side by side. And then I'm going to squeeze those sides together until they're right beside each other, but not overlapping. 
straighten out that little curve. When I can't squeeze any more with my fingers, I'm gonna use my pliers. And notice how I'm holding them side by side. I don't want them to overlap. So you need to take your time with this. Be very, very careful that you keep them side by side. And don't try to rush. Nice and slow. Squeeze those together. Then I'm going to measure approximately half an inch from the bottom. And then I'm gonna, when I say half an inch from the bottom, half an inch from the bottom of my short tail. So this little short tail, half an inch from there, bend that wire up alongside of my pliers. Then I'm going to wrap that tail around my long stem. One wrap, that's all I need. Flip off that end. Get rid of that little tip that I don't want. And push down that little tip. There we go. Nice. I can make every make sure everything looks good here. Yes. So now I'm going to introduce my other bead. Put that on. If I can find the drill point, there it is. Ooh, the wire's bent and it does not want to go on there. Very persnickety. Come on, where is it? I just had it. Oh. Okay, oh, for heaven's sake. Get on there, okay. I have to manipulate my wire a little bit. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Come on, go through. You know you want, oh, you know what I can do is just put this on an, on an angle to conform, I hope. Oh, it does not want to go through there. I don't know if this was just Drilled small, it may be. Oh, there's something blocking it. Yes, there is. Okay, get another one. Okay. That's the fun about natural things that are hand drilled. May not always be perfect. And there we go. I have to remember to throw that one away or try to drill it. But these seeds are can be a little tricky to drill yourself. Okay, so now I need to attach this to my bracelet. And again, just like I did with that one, this is going side to side. This is the hook. It's going side to side. The hook's going to go up and down. The two wires are, the sides of the wires are going side to side, and this needs to go also up and down. So, these are side by side. I need this to be bent back, just like that. I'm gonna make my loop. Doesn't need to be a huge loop again. 
about halfway down my pliers, wrap that around, make my loop just like I've been doing all the other times, and slide my clasp on right down into my loop. Okay. And let's wrap it. Only need it one time around again. It's very small space in here. If you want to use the round pliers, please do so. But go all the way as far back as you can go so that you don't put any dents in your wire. Wrap that around. I only need one wrap. Cut that tail off. Push that little end down. Okay, and let's make my hook. Straighten that out, make sure that looks good. Yeah. All right, right down here where it's wrapped, I want to bend my wire back. This is the top of my bracelet. I wanna bend it back away from the bottom. So I wanna make sure I'm bending right here at the top, right here where the wrap meets the wire. I don't want a space in there. I want it right there, just like that. Then I'm gonna to go to the tip and I'm gonna bend that in the same direction, right at the tip, right there. Just twist my wrist until I have a little bend. Then I'm gonna grab my round nose pliers and just about an eighth of an inch away from the little bend that I put in here, I'm gonna slide my wire down my pliers just underneath that bend point. And I'm going to turn my wrist to start my hook. I'm not gonna go all the way. I'm gonna stop about a third of the way and then rotate back, clamp back down onto my wire Rotate a little bit more, another third, rotate back, and another third, and there's my shepherd's hook, and there is my bracelet. There it is. <laughs> I told you it was going to be simple, didn't I? I did. There it is. Very nice. Okay, time to try it on. First, let me measure, make sure I got it right. I did. Very nice. And time to try it on. Let's do that. Okay, there we go. Oh, isn't that neat? I love it. There's my bracelet. I told you it was simple. You can make a bunch of these. You can make it for your friends. You can make it for yourself. <clears throat> you can make it for Christmas presents. Wouldn't this make a neat Christmas present? You don't have to have the acai beads like I have here. You don't have to use the tagua nuts like I have here. You can design this any way you want. Oh, I love it. I really, truly do. Oh, thank you, Ecuador, for having an Independence Day that I could use to make some pretty jewelry and spotlight your cause. I love that. So... That's it, ladies and gents. 
there's my bracelet. I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you'll make one for yourself because it's, I'm using those words easy and simple again. I don't think anybody can challenge me on that. I love it. <laughs> so I, I hope that you enjoyed this. Let me know one way or the other. I like to know whether you do or not. I'd like to know whether it didn't come through for you, if you didn't like it, if you did like it, one way or the other. I'd really love to hear from you at jewelrygen20 at gmail.com. That's J-E-W-E-L-R-Y-G-I-N-2-0 at gmail.com. You can put pictures of what you make on the DeKalb County Library page because they're the ones sponsoring this for you. Um, so it's facebook.com slash decab library. That's facebook.com slash D-E-K-A-L-B-L-I-B-R-A-R-Y. Or you can leave comments as, uh, well, you can use leave comments and pictures on the Facebook page, but you can leave comments also at the YouTube um, uh, library page, which is youtube.com slash decab library. One way or the other, I hope to hear from you because I just have so much fun doing this. And I really love hearing what you have to say. Good, bad, indifferent, whatever. I really, really, really would appreciate hearing from you. So until next time, enjoy the rest of your week wherever you are in it. Have a great weekend and I will see you later. Bye-bye.